certainly has a unique frame, sir. I got it from home. It was a present from the mother-in-law. All I needed to do was remove the atrocity that was in it. What is that, sir? Mahogany? Uh, well, it's certainly one of the more exotic woods. Yes, it's too dark for teak. Why are the two of you talking about the frame when it's the painting that merits attention? I think your use of colour is extraordinary. You needn't flatter me, Doctor. But why exactly do you say so? With this painting, I see a creative vision taking hold. You seem to be capturing the essence of the North Woods, and not just the hmm. actual of it. Well, it's not half bad for a copper. <laughs> I, I'm curious, sir. Why did you use blue and pink for the trees? Creative vision, Murdoch, like Dr. Ogden just said. Oh, and uh, I ran out of the green. Yeah. George, look at this one. He's put a few away already. Oh, he's coming right for us. Most drunks head the other way when they see us. He's too pickled to know if he's coming or going. <laughs> Well, I'm off duty. Uh, getting an early start today, sir? Eagle. What's that? Eagle. Eagle. What? Eagle flight. Sir, uh, sir are you all right? Eagle. Eagle. I, I, I can't make out what he's trying to say. What? Murder. Sir? Sir? He's out cold, George. He's gone cold, Henry. He's dead. We thought he was just three sheets to the wind, sir. Then we realized he was trying to tell us something. I've been murdered. And then he died. We're at our feet, sir. Thank you, Henry. Doctor? Well, if we can consider the constable's account accurate, he may well have died from a seizure. Edward Graham, surveyor for the Temiskaming and Northern Ontario Railway. Sir, and his appointment book has a meeting for today at 5 o'clock with C-A-M at M-D and A. I have no idea what that could mean. Right. Gentlemen, let's notify his next of kin. imagine it, Detective. He only just arrived home this morning. Unexpected at that. He was so excited, so happy. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Graham. I understand your son was a surveyor. Yes. He was under contract to the Ontario government for the new Northern Railway. You say his visit was unexpected. Do you have any idea why he returned to Toronto? I don't. All he told me was that our fortunes were about to change. How so? Well, he didn't say. He hurried right out to take care of some business. He returned with a small parcel and put it in his suitcase. And then what happened? He was so happy he took a drink to celebrate, which surprised me, him knowing I don't approve. I scolded him for that. Oh, dear Lord, my last words to him were in anger. Mrs. Graham, what time would this have been? Around midday, I believe. Um, I wonder if any of these abbreviations mean something to you. MDNA. That could very well be Murphy's dining in Alehouse just down the road. E Edward liked to socialize there. And CAM? I couldn't say. Thank you. Um, just one final question, Mrs. Graham. What does Eagle Flight mean to you? Nothing at all. Detective. Doctor. The only physical evidence I've found is a venous congestion of the brain. I'm inclined to believe he may have been poisoned. Doctor, have you the flask that Mr. Graham had in his possession? I do. According to his mother, Mr. Graham took a drink, presumably from this flask, whiskey, approximately one hour prior to collapsing dead on the station house steps. There are a number of poisons that could manifest the same way as in Mr. Graham. I'll endeavor to determine which one was put into his whiskey. Thank you. Oh. 
So Graham came here because he knew that he'd been poisoned. Why didn't he go to the hospital? Well, sir, if he believed he'd been poisoned, perhaps he wanted to alert the authorities. What's this eagle flying? The last words that Graham uttered before his death. You know, Murdoch, that makes perfect sense. There's a brand of whiskey called Eagle's Flight. Horrible stuff. He was obviously trying to tell Crabtree how he'd been poisoned. Sir, I believe you may be right. Hmm. Oh, well. Sirs, Mr. Graham's suitcase. Thank you, George. It's locked. Do you have a key? No, sir, Mrs. Graham didn't have the key. However, if you'll allow me, let the dog see the rabbit. Thinking of a change of profession, Crabtree? No, sir, just trying to hone my skills. Oh. I've almost got it there now. Crabtree, move it. Sir, I've almost got it. Move! There you go. I softened it up for you. <clears throat> well, there doesn't seem to be anything of any importance. Graham's mother did say that he stowed something in here. Just a moment, sir. The outer dimensions of the case appear to be much larger than the inner ones. Sir, a secret compartment, perhaps? I love a secret compartment. Not so secret anymore. A hand-drawn map, likely of the area Graham had been surveying for the Northern Ontario Railway. Well, look what we have here. Sirs, this is what Mr. Graham must have been talking about when he said their uh, fortunes were going to change. Or perhaps it was money he was planning to use in his upcoming meeting with CAM. Edward Graham? Detective William Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. Constabulary? What's this about? Sir... Mr. Graham is dead. What? But I was to have met him here today. Yes, and you are? My name is Charles Arthur McCool, MP for the Nipissing Region. C-A-M. You're a member of Parliament. Indeed, sir. What was Mr. Graham's business with you? Oh, I do not know. Uh, I've never met the man. But you agreed to a meeting with him? Well, I knew him by name. He wrote a report that led to a change in the route of the Tamiskaming Railway. What was this change? Well, he proposed uh, that it run due north of North Bay to Diamond, instead of along Lake Temiskaming to Haleybury. And you supported that? I took his advice. Were you expecting recompense? Exactly what are you insinuating? Well, sir, Mr. Graham was found with a great deal of money in his possession. Bribery? How dare you accuse me of such chicanery? I'm simply trying to ascertain the facts. I'll have you know that I have never... I have never accepted so much as one red cent of dirty money. Again, what was Mr. Graham's business with you then? I am as curious as you, detective. I believe the poison was put into the victim's flask, but any odor and taste is masked by the cheapness of the whiskey. So you can imagine the difficulty I'm having. I'd be happy to help. Poisons have always been a particular interest of mine. Excellent. I ordered a new nest of rats to help with the testing. When do we start? Well, they arrive tomorrow. Do you have a hidden talent I'm unaware of? Uh, I don't, but I know someone who does. Provincial records show that one Harold Richmond bought great tracts of land in and around Haleybury. The original proposed terminus for the railway line. Where might we find this, Mr. Richmond? His residence is listed in Haleybury. Haleybury is where Mr. Graham had been staying while surveying. Perhaps they knew one another? Richmond would have lost a lot of money after Graham changed the proposed route of the railway. Right then, pack your bags. You two are off to Haleybury. What have you there, George? My pillow, sir. There'll be pillows in Haleybury. Yes, but this is my pillow, sir. I can't sleep a wink without her. I discovered that on our trip to Newfoundland. You realize we'll be trekking through the woods, George. Yes, exactly, sir. All the more reason to bring it.
Sir, the only time I've been up this way before was to visit my Aunt Nettle. Not nearly as exciting as this trip. George, you do not have an aunt in Haleybury. Well, not anymore, sir. She moved back to Newfoundland. Why? She couldn't stand the mainland, sir. Terrified of moose. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon the disruption, gentlemen. Dagger Brown's the name. Uh, Crabtree. George Crabtree. This is Detective William Murdoch. Detective? Well, I have to mind myself then, mustn't I? I'm a prospector. It's not an easy life, but if you know your way around a claim, you can make one heck of a living. What are you searching for? Oh, detective. The true prospector is not out in search of one single substance. Nay, the prospector roams like the hunter of the plains, waiting until his prey is discovered to strike. You're no prospector. You're a damn greenhorn. Excuse me? What's a greenhorn? A gink who thinks he knows something about prospecting. They shouldn't let the likes of you out of the city. Excuse me, but regardless of experience, I believe everyone has an equal right to prospect as he wishes, ma'am. Don't call me that. The name's Mac. Oh. My apologies, Mac. I wonder, when we reach the end of the line, could you direct us to Haleybury? Yeah, you can tag along. You haven't said much. Strong, silent type. Ooh. I like that in a man. Inspector, I took the liberty of entering your painting into an amateur competition at the Littlewood Gallery. I'm sure it will be well received. Julia. Stand down, Doctor. I see you found my note. I did, and I forbid it. I really feel you're overreacting. Your painting is quite lovely. Any fool can see that my painting doesn't belong the wall with the likes of these. I mean, look at them. Even the leaves are perfect. What does that matter? You have just as much right to share your efforts with the public. I don't see the harm in it. The harm, Doctor, is that I will be humiliated. I wish I could convince you. Well, you can't. I, I couldn't help it over here. I must say I agree with the lady. Who are you? Are you a painter? Oh, yes, I, I painted this sign right here. <laughs> but I'm also a student of art. Your painting is the best I've seen so far. Are you having me on? Not at all. I mean, yours is the only original of the bunch. That's very nice of you, young man. Unfortunately, the inspector seems to have made up his mind. Hold your horses, Doctor. Perhaps I should share my efforts with the public. So you will accept his critique, but not mine? I've always been a big believer in consensus, Doctor. Sir. Sir, you've no tie or collar. No need, George. This here's our guide. There are enough horses for all of us, but uh, a couple donkeys should do the trick. to the Newfoundlander to catch a fish. Excellent work, George. Well, perhaps you could gut it, sir, as where I caught it. These ought to sweeten it right up. Who'd have thought you'd find wild parsnips in these parts? You don't want to be doing that. What? They're just parsnips. Those are not parsnips. That's kagagaminj. Excuse me? Kagagaminj. That's Algonquin for water hemlock. Highly poisonous. It can be identified by the vein traveling inward to the notch of the leaf. You know Algonquin? Oh, uh, a bit enough to trade. I was a lumberjack a long time ago. Say, did you happen to guide a man named Edward Graham last Tuesday, traveling from Haleybury to the train? I guide many people. I don't ask names. Over here, Georgie. Let's gut that fish together. Sir, do you hear that? Whoa. 
wolves, George. Miles away. Miles away? Mm-hmm. Mm. Very good. Sir, that wasn't miles away. Did you hear that? It's probably raccoons, George. Raccoons. Oh. Sharp teeth, though, sir. And ornery raccoons. Oh, what was that? It's nature, George. Nothing more than that. Just nature. Nature? I'm not sure I care for it. You happen to know a Harold Richmond? Everybody around here knows Richmond. Nah, keeps me in business. He frequents the inn? Regularly. He'll likely be in later, strutting about the place like a peacock. And another man, uh, Edward Graham. Do you know him? Sure. Keeps a room here. Oh, I'll be needing his key as well. <laughs> no. Sir, Mr. Graham is dead. I'm a police detective um, in investigating his murder. I demand you relinquish that key at once. You pay his bill, you get his key. How much does he owe? $26.37. Sir, what if we get caught? We don't have $26. Well, nor do we have the authority to break and enter. Ah, excellent work. Sir, is this surveying equipment? Yes, George. Drawer is locked, sir. That shouldn't be a problem for you, George. This is all prospecting equipment. Not uncommon to find in these parts. Got it, sir. That's odd. It's empty. I wonder. What does it mean? I have no idea. Code of some sort? It's possible. Without knowing the orientation or knowing what these symbols mean, it's impossible to know what Mr. Graham was recording. Well, sir, that symbol looks like the moon. And that's the symbol for man. Do you suppose he could... No, George, I don't suppose that Mr. Graham had encountered moon men. Hmm. Um, I was thinking more along the line of astronomy or... No. Either way, sir, it must be important. Otherwise, why would he have hid that map in his suitcase and these symbols locked away in the drawer here? Indeed, George. All right. Lock these away in your room and meet me downstairs. We need to speak with Harold Richmond, sir. Yes, I knew Graham. I couldn't stand that bastard. I'm not sorry he's dead. Why is that? I staked my fortune on the land all around Haleybury. The railroad was supposed to end right here, so I bought up everything that wasn't on the Indian reservation. Then that lunatic Graham had the line rerouted. Why does that make him a lunatic? Because it makes no sense. Look, either Graham was an incompetent surveyor or a lying thief who falsified his reports for his own purposes. What purposes would those be? Oh, I don't know, but I've hired my own surveyors to find out. Uh, Mr. Richmond, is there anybody who could confirm your whereabouts for Thursday evening past? No. I was at home. I haven't been in Toronto in months, if that's what you're asking. And when did you last see Edward Graham? I'm not sure. Some weeks ago. 
Are you accusing me of killing him? Did you? <laughs> of course not. I didn't get rich by being stupid. All right, do you know of anyone else who may have been upset with Mr. Graham? He would know. It's Frank Gowdy. He was Graham's assistant. Dead. Dear Lord. How? That's what we're trying to ascertain. Do you have any idea why Mr. Graham traveled to Toronto earlier this week? Uh, he, he didn't say. Um, he left quite suddenly. I, I assumed it was a personal matter. He had family in the city. Did he have any enemies, you know? <laughs> More than a few. A lot of people were counting on that railway coming through. Any of them that may have wished him dead? Harold Richmond, I'm sure. And there was a woman that he used to uh, see. Terribly jealous, mad as a wildcat when he left her. She even followed him down to Toronto. She lives here. Oh, <laughs> she's drinking right there at the end of the bar. There he is, my big strong copper. A uh, miss, uh, Mac. I wasn't talking about you. I understand that you were in an intimate relationship with Mr. Graham. So? Well, I regret to inform you that Mr. Graham was recently found dead. Murdered. Well, uh, I didn't do it. So, George, what about a drink? You were in Toronto. No flies on you, eh? We were on the train together. I also understand that Mr. Graham had recently parted ways with you. I don't know what you heard, but I parted ways with him, and none too soon. George, drink. Uh, perhaps another time, Mac. Sir, her manners could use some refinement to be sure, but do you think she actually killed the man? She did not seem at all surprised at the news of Mr. Graham's murder. And George, poison is traditionally a woman's weapon. Um, excuse me, would I be able to borrow this board? You will bring it back. Yes. Even a small drop of the liquid from Graham's flask was enough to kill this rat. There was no burning of the mucous membranes, so we can rule out arsenic, cyanide, strychnine. I activated carbon I made from ground nut shells and gave it to this rat. He's still alive. So the poison is not a strong acid. We should also rule out alkali, iron, lithium, ethanol, and the like, leaving us with a multitude of plant-based poisons to consider. The rat is still in metabolic acidosis. Have you considered treating it with an antidote of sodium bicarbonate? Of course. If the rat responds, it would narrow down the type of plant. Thank you. Come here, little fella. Let's see if we can make you better. Harold Richmond admits to wanting Edward Graham dead. He would have lost a potential fortune with the rerouting of the railway. Mr. Gowdy, no apparent motive. Although he did have the most access to Mr. Graham's flask. And then the woman, Max, her, she was in Toronto. And jealousy is a powerful motive. Indeed, George. Let's hope Dr. Grace is having some luck identifying the poison. Once we discover what killed Mr. Graham, we'll be in a better position to discover who killed him. Sir, I, I wonder if we could continue this tomorrow. Oh, well, yes. Yes, of course, George. Well, it'd be good to sleep with a roof over one's head so I didn't catch a wink last night. The pillow didn't help? Hello there, Constable. You said, perhaps another time. Well, that time has come. Oh my.
George? Uh, uh, one moment. <sighs> Sir, thank God it's just you. Who are you expecting? Sir, that woman, Mac, has been trying to seduce me. I found her uh, there in my bed when I got back to my room last night. Oh. Sir, I escorted her out directly, make no doubt about it. She broke in here, George? Sir, it was quite unexpected. I realize that women find me quite the catch, but that is no way to win a man. George, is it possible that she was after something else? Sir, I'm not making it up. I found her right there in my bed. I've spent the whole night in a chair against the door. I didn't catch a wink. George, she went to the trouble of breaking the door. Is it possible that her motives may have extended beyond the charms of one George Crabtree? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, sir. Graham's papers are gone. No. It appears our little friend's breathing has improved. Well, that narrows our search. It would likely be among one of the poisonous plants that grow here in Ontario. What about wolfsbane? No, that would have caused asphyxia. White baneberry? The symptoms fit. But it's the fruit that's poisonous and it's out of season. Carnium heculatum. No, no, it's not hemlock. But secuta maculata, water hemlock. Difficulty breathing, convulsions. That matches the symptoms. Emily, I dare say we found our poison. Thank you, Julia. My pleasure. I would telegraph the detective immediately. Ah, doctor. There you are. Is something the matter, Inspector? Oh, on the contrary. My pain scene is about to be judged later today. I was wondering if you would come with me. I should be honored. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the map? What map? The map you stole from Constable Crabtree's room. What? You were in Toronto when Graham died. You were alone in Constable Crabtree's room. You are, at the moment, our prime suspect. George's door was open. I thought it was an invitation. Sir, I assure you, it was firmly locked. It was open, I swear. Whatever you may think, I don't normally have to force myself into a man's bed. If you didn't open the room, then who did? I passed the green horn in the hallway the way up to George's room. Jagger Brown? Mr. Brown, the detective would like to have a word with you. Certainly. Um... Go! My money! 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 Give me my money! Give me my money! Ruffians! Get off my friends! Give me mine! That money George. belongs to me! All right, all right, all right. Where are the maps you stole? What maps? Into your pockets, Mr. Brown. They're gone. Work it, they're gone. No way, wait, ah, ah, ah. Roses in a vase. I've seen that before. Yes, but there's no denying it was painted by a capable hand. These are quite good, I suppose. I rather like this one. This one? It's all just lines. Not even a tree in sight. Where's my painting? Perhaps it's been moved. You there? What's happened to my work? Did, did no one from the gallery inform you it's been stolen? And... Sorry to say. Stolen? How the bloody hell did that happen? How many other paintings were taken? Only yours. I suppose it could be taken as a compliment? I always said it was the best in the show. A thief with good taste is a thief nonetheless. Get Worsley onto it. Do you suppose I'm still eligible for the Tendler Prize? You've yet to provide a satisfactory explanation for all of the money in your briefcase, Mr. Gowdy. My affairs are none of your business. 
Perhaps as the new lead surveyor, you required a healthy bribe from Mr. Richmond to return the railway here. I did not require a bribe to return the railway to its correct path. Mr. Richmond's contribution was an added bonus. You were going to redirect the railway here regardless? Of course. I don't know why Graham was so intent on moving it. His plans made no sense. He even falsified our surveys to support his proposed route. Did you confront him about this? I've only just discovered it since going through his files. I have no idea why he did it. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Gowdy. Uh, I'd like to speak with you further about this. At your service. Hey, come on. Sir, Mr. Brown here claims the maps are gone. He says they must have been stolen in the kerfuffle just now. In any case, they're not on it. Not that I could make heads or tails of them anyway. Good luck to whoever's got Thank them. Thank you. Mr. Brown, you were acquainted with Mr. Graham, were you not? Never met the man. I beg to differ. Beg all you want. I didn't know him, and you can't prove it. This telegram proves otherwise. You were seen with Mr. Graham in Toronto. Seen? Who saw me? You were seen. Now, Mr. Brown, you know nothing about prospecting. What are you doing here? And how did you know Mr. Graham's maps were important? I was in the assayer's office, working on the books when he came in. Graham. Yes. He had a nugget with him. It must have been the size of his fist. I only stole a map. I didn't murder anyone. A nugget? Nugget of what? Silver, detective. Silver? He told the assayer there was plenty more where that came from. I knew it had to be around here somewhere. Right. Uh, Mr. Brown, thank you. You're free to go. Sir, I have to admit some confusion. Dr. Grace's telegram ascertains that... Mr. Graham was indeed poisoned by water hemlock. Sir, how does that prove that Jack Brown was seen with Graham in Toronto? It doesn't, George. The telegram makes no mention of Mr. Brown. But you just... Sir, you were bluffing. I was prospecting, George. At any rate, Dr. Grace's findings prove that Mr. Brown could not be the murderer. How so? You don't want to be doing that. What? They're just parsnips. Parsnips. He was going to feed us all water hemlock. He didn't know it was poisonous. No. But everyone else here does. So Mr. Graham rerouted the railway to protect his silver fine. Then why meet with the politician in Toronto? I mean, surely if he had falsified surveys, that would be enough for the government to comply with his recommendation. I think it has something to do with the native reservation, George. A bribe, sir? Perhaps he bribed a member of parliament to seize Indian land. So he could lay claim to it himself? Which would mean that there is silver somewhere on the current reservation. Which means whoever has the maps knows about the silver and where to find it. And they're one step ahead of us. Excuse me, may I see this? But you haven't given me my chalkboard back yet. Sir, uh, we are police officers. So we will bring back your chalkboard. The symbols, George. The crescent moon? Silver. Northernmost point of Long Lake. Thank you. Ah, oh, Doctor. I was just thinking which of my other paintings are good enough to be stolen. <laughs> the gallery found this. My painting? It seems the thieves discarded it in the alley. Oh, they stole it for the fancy frame. It appears so. But the painting can be salvaged. I know someone who cleans canvases. He might be able to help. Forget it. Bloody thieves were right. What's the point in salvaging something that has no worth? Inspector, Thank I... Thank you, Doctor. Now, if you don't mind, I'll have quite a bit of work to be getting on with. Sir, how do you know which way we should be headed? Well, George, the bottom tip of the crescent moon was just north of the 
the top edge of Long Lake. Yes, but, sir, how do we know the silver's not uh, right in the middle of the moon? We're at the top of it. That's a good point, George. We'll have to explore the entire area. Sir, look at that. Could that be silver? I believe it is, George. Look at this. It's a carved inscription. Edward Graham, the 5th of August, 1902. Graham staked a claim here. There should be four more of these outlining the claim in its entirety, but they would be on stumps still on the ground. Sir, stumps like this one, sir. But it's not his name. M. McCarthy, Mac, September 7, 1902. Edward Graham staked this claim, and then Mac put her name ahead of his. She was trying to jump his claim. Yes, George. I believe Mac killed Edward Graham. Sir, I believe you're right. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I have to protect my claim. Edward Graham's claim has no legitimacy. Neither will yours. This is Indian land. Once the government sees that there's silver here, they'll see to it that this land becomes fair game, and I will become a very rich woman. So, of course, you understand when I have to do this. No! I don't suppose you want to share my wealth. Oh, well, I'm so sorry, but I have to shoot you, too. Sir, you're all right. George. Sir, you're all right. Uh, uh, the medicine woman here took the bullet out of your shoulder. You've been in delirium, in and out, but you're past the worst of it. They've been very good to us here, sir. This man saved your life. Thank you. Thank you. In an ambam, pigigizinuma. Go win in Inua, Kagan, walk. You know, in the snow, begging in the work we can and walk on. Kiwi win key, make a ship in me, eh? You know, in the snow, beg da, gigging da. Megizin Pimije. That's your name? In English, it means eagle flight, doesn't it? You know the properties of water hemlock. You poisoned Mr. Graham's flask when you guided him to the train. Am I speaking the truth? Why? Silver. If people found out, then we would... You'd lose your home. Can you deny that you won't take it away? Can you deny we won't be removed from our land? I, I can't, but that's not what's at issue here. Go home. No, sir. Ten men, please, don't. Don't. Then you will die here. Your body's never found, both of you. Others will come for us. We will run. And they will chase you. Begize Pimige, you... You are under arrest for the murder of Edward Graham. Sir, they saved our lives. You have no authority here. This is not your world. We do not follow your laws. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, and you are coming with me. You add our two lives to your conscience? I am protecting my birthright. And I am doing my duty. As I had to try and do mine. Go while you still have your lives. George, 
I don't. I don't. Sir. Inspector Brackenreed. Oh, hello. What can I do for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was hoping you might sell me your painting from the exhibition. Sell it to you? If you would. I'd like to try my hand at the canvas. Not, not to paint pale imitations of the natural world, but rather to paint its essences, as you do. I'd, I'd be prepared to pay. Oh. Oh, well, I'm flattered, but uh, it's not for sale. I'm thinking of re-entering it in the next exhibition. I'm sorry to hear that. Hold your horses, hold your horses. Uh, the prize money was $10. It's yours for 15 15 Take it or leave it. All right. 15 Wise choice. Mr... Thompson. Tom Thompson. Ah, oh, well, Mr. Thompson, I hope I can provide some inspiration. Good day. Good day to you, too. <laughs> Inspector. This is Brackenridge on the telephone. Something about a missing picture frame. Oh, old Woody Hill. Thank you. Megizé Pimigé turned himself in yesterday. I suppose he knew someone would come looking for him. And the people he was with? They moved further north. It won't go well for them, will it? The silver will draw prospectors like moths to a flame. Megizé Pimigé started a fight he couldn't possibly hope to win. Surely they have a treaty that will protect them. Let's get you to bed. Our government is made of men of good conscience. Let's hope they honor it. <laughs> 